Johns Hopkins has done such a good job, not only on the clinical side, but also the experiential side. Mm -hmm. I mean, were you a part of that study that was showing that like a certain high percentage, I forget the numbers, used to have them off the cuff, but a certain high percentage said that their psilocybin journey was their top life experience? Yeah, yeah. Can you so drop that into that study? Early, yeah, yeah, yeah. So we did, um, I, I arrived at the, when that very first study was was wrapping up, but then I initiated, drafted, you know, led the second study, which is a file looking at different doses. But same thing, like not treating a disorder, just saying we're going to take, you know, highly functional adults who are in and in those studies they were spiritual seekers broadly defined so and given the claims about you know religious spiritual what have you broadly defined these kind of you know transcendental again there's a million words different languages you could wrap around it these extraordinary experiences which touch on the big questions it's like okay let's get some p different people that have like you know, had some experience in those realms. Like they've tried a bunch of meditation and different mm -hmm. services and like, you name, you know, sweat lodge or whatever their particular like tradition is. And, um, and the results were extraordinary about a third. And this was, has been replicated in multiple studies, but about a third will say it was the most, um, meaningful and spiritually significant experience of their life. This is not like laying on a couch in a hospital in Baltimore. <laughs> I mean, like, have people seen The Wire? I mean, that really says something, you know, like the context. It's not yeah, like, and sure. Yeah, you know, uh, <laughs> yeah, but, and then, you even, you know, and sometimes people be like, well, yeah, there's that, you know, yeah, my marriage, I don't want to, God, I feel bad for putting that down to number two. So, yeah, so it's also interesting to say, like, what are the, okay, What's is it the in the psychology? top five? And then you get like two thirds. Yeah. You know, which is really impressive. You know, it's like, yeah, maybe it's not one of the... <laughs> well, I mean, I had kids that were born. I got married. Yeah, you know? well, why I the got, kids are going to kill me if I... I can't I, like... fill out one, number one here, <laughs> yeah. but really secretly. So, off record, <laughs> off record, It's number really one. a one, but if my wife asks, it's... But yeah, it's like, you know, it's like most people, like, you know, with prepper, and it's not random, you know, it's not just taking a big dose, uh, but it's taking a... It is, and it is a big dose, to be clear. It's a heroic dose. Um... In that case, 30 milligrams body weight adjusted. So if you're above 70 kilograms, about 150 pounds, and a higher dose of like whatever, 200 plus pounds, you could get you know up to you know 50 you know, milligrams or so. So this is like 30 milligrams would be about what Terrence McKenna would call the, the heroic dose. Mm -hmm. About five dried grams of Celaspi cubensis. So this is mm -hmm. a high dose. So at that yeah, at that dose, you know, you can get. You know, not everybody, but two thirds of the people will say this was one of the top most meaningful experiences in my life. And you could schedule that for next Wednesday. <laughs> like, and that's the thing. And research has yeah. been done with these experiences. And we don't take these kind of, call it what you will, quantum uh, change experiences, these like mystical experiences. Research, and it's not a popular area of research because it's so hard to really, you, know, you can't bring it in. It's hard to bring it into the lab and really study. And psychologists have been, like myself, have been obsessed with understanding behavior change for you know, hundred years, but you know, we're used to incremental behavior change. And we forget that the world is filled with these cases where people say, well, there was me before this experience and there was me after this experience. And and the world's literature and mythology is filled with this, you know, Saul Initiation the Rosary, rituals. Ebenezer Scrooge, yeah. Ebenezer rituals. It's like, now you're a man. Yeah. Or the, you know, you know, uh, yeah, bar mitzvah or man, woman, you know, it's a vision all of quest, these rituals like have whatever the tradition. And hollow and shallow, so we don't have that actually baked in our culture. But, right. you know, you think of like 300, the wolf in the winter snow, you know, it's like the young king to be Leonidas goes out in the cold in the fucking snow. And this is a fictionalized story, but he's, he goes out there to confront the wild of the wilderness. This is a yeah. traditional vision quest and yeah. come back. He leaves as a boy and comes back as a man. We used to have this baked in to yeah. our own culture where things would happen where you were dramatically different from one place to another. And at least for me, you know, this was, that was my initiation. That changed my life forever, right? Mm -hmm. I had a vision quest initiation with psilocybin and actually, and MDMA. Wow. Yeah. If with a, with a shaman who was actually, you know, he was, she was a part of the kind of Stan Groff crew and kind oh, of went yeah. underground and that uh -huh. she was unbelievably skilled. 
And she took me out to the mountains of New Mexico. I stayed in a yurt, I tended my fire. And, you know, I had the tea of the psilocybin tea and a capsule of probably, you know, one point, a hundred milligrams of MDMA. I don't know at that point what it mm -hmm. was, but I remember it was a combination of both. And I, it completely changed my life forever. I was mm. not the same man that walked into the hut, uh, not the same boy that walked into that hut as the one that walked out, you know, two days later. Wow. Like it was, it was one of those different things that the Aubrey that everybody knows who's listening would not be the same Aubrey without that initiation. And it's not the only way, it's not the only way to do it, but it's one of the few ways that we can safely do this now right. that really could work. Mm -hmm. And it's, we're seeing it on the, as you said, on the medical side as well, like these initiatory transcendental experiences, shifting everything, three right. sessions of MDMA curing PTSD in a yeah. high percentage of people, right? It's a whole new model. Yeah. And one advantage of these techniques, and I should be clear, yeah, everything has risks and I never encourage any drug use. And by that, I mean caffeine, you name it. To Likewise. That, you know, it's a it, very personal choice. Right, and that's important. Right, there should, are risks. We should probably say that at least three times more <laughs> during this podcast because it's it every, important. Like, three seconds. <laughs> yeah, I, for sure. What I do. But, like, but, but what I say is relatively speaking, and this is what got my colleague David Nutt um, uh, uh, removed as the official, like um, es essentially the drugs are in Great Britain years ago when he said uh, MDMA is like even like dirty street ecstasy, okay? <laughs> Which, you know, a lot of times as we know, including research I've done is not MDMA or it's, you know, mixed with plenty of impurities, even dirty street ec ecstasy, no question, far safer than horseback riding. <laughs> he wrote this tongue-in-cheek article. He called it equacy. Like he took the, the the roots for like you know horseback riding, uh -huh. and anyway, made an ecstasy type. To, and made this very kind of humorous article about there's this new horrible drug. It's called, and he gave the same statistics for horseback riding. And you read this thing, and you're like, this is like, oh my god, Superman died like five yeah. years ago, like you know whatever because of this. Like sure. back then, this is years ago. He wrote this, but like he's right. It's like oh, and it's like all these horrible statistics and it's like who would allow this you know i just want to make the point like when we're talking about you know compared to traditional cultures and and just lots of diff traditional techniques like okay go out and don't eat for weeks on end go out in the desert where you have to get your own water like you might die like there's a good chance like mm -hmm. i mean certain number of people don't make it like yep. encounters with wild animals it's like in the right setting these techniques they have their risk but they are incredibly safe i mean yeah. It, I mean, psilocybin is so much safer than going skiing. And again, I'm not encouraging people to to do any of this. I'm not encouraging people to go skiing, <laughs> you know, or take psilocybin. I but take psilocybin when I go skiing, actually. Like, <laughs> so, I, so I'm really, I'm really running the risk profile high up. But I swear to you, I'm a way better fucking skier. I, I become the mountain and the snow and as I'm skiing. what kind of dose? I like, uh, usually like a, between a gram and a gram and a half. So on okay, the lower sort of standard, on the potency. like lower size, standard but not a potency. microdose. No, that's a real and dose. Again, yeah, that's we a, have yeah. to be we have to be really careful here because a gram, gram and a half of what they call the penis envy strain. Oh yeah, fuck oh, off! God. No way! Easily I'm like five, I'm just gonna melt three into to the, five grams. I'm gonna of, melt into yeah. the chair and be going up and down and up and down <laughs> on the lift, going like I'm not getting off. No way! I'm getting off. <laughs> Don't make me get off. Uh -huh. You know, so it's, uh, yeah, for sure. But that, these experiences that I've had, and of course I have a lot of experience and this is not a recommendation to do what I do, but there's, it's interesting, all of the biases that we mm -hmm. have about this, like, oh, you're not going to be able to function or operate. I'm fucking telling you, I shred when I have a little psilocybin and I know fighters who might, who take like a little bit more than a microdose before they fight. I know a lot of, you know, a lot of people who, experiment with these different compounds and actually get better, get more aware, yeah. get more tuned into their environment. And all of these ideas, it's just like, hold them lightly. Some of them may be right. There could be psychotic breaks. I've seen that happen, mm -hmm. you know, and of course that's why MAPS has the Zendo project mm -hmm. and why it's important to always be prepared because this can trigger episodes that are scary and dangerous. And so to be very mindful, but also let's hold all of this propaganda that we've been told let's hold this lightly yeah and 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 just think about things relatively mm -hmm. think about the risks of uh, of, of swimming pools and yeah. <laughs> and and all manner of, of of sport 
you know, and and all of yeah. the pharmaceutical drugs that uh, that exist. Yes, yes. You know, like all Thank of the you, other yeah. drugs, we're like, oh yeah, whatever. Take as you know, benzos, what all SSRIs. Oh. Take them, go for it. You know, and then there's people. You know, like suicidality is a side effect, a known mm-hmm. side effect of certain pharmaceutical compounds. Yeah, homicidality is a side effect of certain. I think it was the, what was the smoking cessation? Yeah, Varenicline, Chantix. Was Chantix. The brand name, yeah. Homicidality yeah. is a side effect. What and the I was, fuck? Yeah, I was hearing anecdotes about that even, you know, before the, the black box warning and that, yeah, like just these weird stories that you wonder, has that made it into any medical file? Like someone that you, you know, a relative's, co-worker's, uh, sister, this type of thing. Right. But yeah, like killed his son. Like was you know it's like you just wonder how much of this is actually getting, you know, you know, getting into the analyses. But but yeah, these things have you know pharmaceuticals. It's I mean that's a good point because it's like in, in the context of medicine, you know, not just you know having you know extreme uh, ex- experiences, but it's all risk benefit ratio. Mm-hmm. I mean, we give drugs that just we know causes cause motor damage, like say for you know, uh, schizophrenia, but it, sometimes that's the only thing that stops someone from having an absolutely hellish sure. life with the voices that, you know, and it's like, well, yeah, we do our best. And it's like, what's the, yeah, what's the path forward? It's risk benefit. You yeah, know, and it's just like, looking this at, have that's risks, science. But, that's yeah. science actually looking at everything without the biases, without the narratives, without all the stories and actually listening to people who have experiences you know recently i just had aaron Rodgers on the podcast and he's uh you know quarterback for the green bay packers won a super bowl last two seasons has been the mvp of the league right and so a lot of ideas about what would happen if you did psychedelics Mm -hmm. well and i told this story and you know i encourage people to listen to the podcast with him when telling the story but the first time i met him he listened to me do a podcast with his girlfriend at the time danica patrick and finished the podcast and he pulls me aside and and he's like, I want to tell you about one of the best days of my life. And I was thinking, oh, fucking Super Bowl, I don't know, like national championship, MVP something. I was figuring like some football related thing. He's oh, like, yeah. Triumph. I took yep. mushrooms for the first time <laughs> on the beach and I merged with, with, I merged with the ocean and it was one of the best days of my life. And no championship ring? <laughs> like, yeah, what? yeah. And yeah. I was like, damn. That's yeah. fucking cool. And it goes to your same study, right? It's yeah. like so a life full of accolades and a life yeah. full of accomplishments and amazing things, the draft day and the Super Bowl and all this. And and he's like, and I also wonder if for him it wasn't like actually that was the best day, but <laughs> you know, I can't say I can't say that. You know, but and so that like kind of started to form this initial friendship. And and then he did ayahuasca for the first time prior to the 2020 season. And people think, oh, you can't do that. It'll tell you to stop playing football because football is stupid. It'll tell you all of these things. And then he goes out and he wins the MVP of the league two years in a row after that. Right. And so finally, like he's, you know, he's telling this story. And and I think I'm just celebrate him for the courage to share that story because it's important to change people's perceptions to say, mm-hmm. like, no, this isn't always going to tell you to to stop doing what you're doing and right. do something different or make you worse at what you do. It'll tell you that if he needs to tell you that because it's you telling yourself that. It's some knowing that you have inside that this is unlocking. It's not like it has an agenda for you. Right. It's you telling you what to do. And if you want to play football better, I'll tell you how to do that. Right. I've never seen a single person move to a cave in India to to meditate the rest of the I've never seen that. I'm not saying it has never happened, but- you and know? people are so afraid of that. Right. That's like one of these ideas that have, that has permeated mm-hmm. culture. And spouses and, and partners. Uh, that's one of the things that struck me over the years that oftentimes a spouse or partner will have this concern of someone going to do a study with psilocybin. And they're like, I've read about this stuff. It can cause personality change, it can, which is true. But, but you, you know, one could hear that and think all kinds of like things. Um, uh, and, you know, yeah, they're going to go they're going to divorce me. They're going to move to some cave in India and sell, you know, sell our house. And I'm going to be <laughs> yeah, stuck with right. the mortgage like that. <laughs> Never seen that, you know, not saying that that, you know, of course, this is people without like tons of experience that are, you know, having a, a controlled, you know, prepared, integrated experience, you know. So 
you know, can't say that's never happened, but yeah, some of the fears are just, you know, they're out there, you know, and right. we don't, we just don't see them. Yeah, yeah. There's a disproportionate amount of actual, actual stories versus the narrative story that it's mm -hmm. going to happen. And I think that's what it's about. It's not saying this has never happened or it never will or never could, but it's just kind of starting to get everything in, in a more appropriate field of value. Yeah. So you understand that this is the realm of possibility. This is on the extreme aberrant outlier case. Yeah, it is, it is possible, yeah. but that would come from, and I think the important thing that I always stress, that would come from you having that truly deep desire. And the fact the 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 reality that you would think about moving to a cave in India if you hadn't already thought about it right. and already been drawn about it and as you close your eyes before you go into bed you're already thinking like I really wish I was a cave in India to think that that's going to happen just because yeah. the psychedelics are going to tell you some message no it doesn't work that way it's a handshake between your consciousness and a greater consciousness and both are communicating to each other that's why it works. Yeah. It's not a one size fits all. It's not like you go to the guru and the guru doesn't listen to you and just tells you what he wants to tell you. Mm -hmm. It's not it's not fucking Zoltar. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Great reference. It's yeah. it's a different thing. I often think that 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 when people get the best results, they have that orientation of there's an agency there. Like when someone says, Oh yeah, I did the session and now I know what psilocybin does to you. Now I know what psilocybin is like. It's like, yeah, but no. The bigger story is like it, when someone really gets, you know, slammed, like you get the full Monty experience and they're just, their whole soul is shattered and like, they're just like, oh my God, like mm -hmm. uh, it's, this is what I learned about myself. This is what I learned about the nature of the universe. This is what I learned mm -hmm. about him. It's not about, this is what this particular compound does. Yeah, And that, you know, that's a part of it, but it really fits with the old ad, you know, it's like, it's just the key that unlocks th the door. And, but what's behind that door it's like that's you, you mm. know. I mean, so it's uh, people have different ways to say it, you know. Whether it's just a you know chemical, you know, throwing a monkey wrench that into their brain that kind of allows somehow you know greater access to their own psyche, you know. Whether it's some you know a, a larger consciousness or what have you, it could be stated in many many different ways. But there's when it really seems to work, it, it seems like there's some sense of, it's something about you. Mm. It's something about you in relationship to the other, in relationship to the universe. You, you know, if one is religiously inclined, God, mm -hmm. language again shifts, but like, it's that you're at the center of it and that's where the learning happens. Mm -hmm. And that's where it's like, it's not just like about what this drug does, it's about like what I am and what am I here to do? Yeah. And sometimes like people just have that context effect where they it's like they just keep going to the they're backing up and they're getting that larger and larger and larger frame. It's like they've gone through their whole life habituated and kind of narrowed, narrowed, narrowed vision. And they're like, what do I really want to do? What's really important to me? What